when the economy is booming, we're opening up more gyms, we're setting sales records, we're setting membership records, we're setting personal training records. And a funny thing happened when the economy was crashing, we were opening up gyms, there were coaches, now again, minority, not majority, but there were coaches that were making more money than they had ever made in a down economy. Okay, well, similarly, I see that like, look, some of the companies that had to file bankruptcy and had to close lots of gyms, that wasn't because of COVID. That was the smoke screen. That was their cover story. It was they were going to close timing. anyway. Yeah, timing. Yeah. yeah. And they, they got to take advantage of some PPP loans and they got to clean up a little bit of shop and then close and they don't have to own it. They don't have to go, my gym closed because I was a shitty operator. That's a really good point. I closed because of COVID. No, you didn't. You were going to close anyway. COVID is cleansing the system getting some bad operators out. And if you love what you're doing, and you're in this industry, and you're a good operator, you're going to benefit from that. There's the silver lining. And as we, I don't know how many letters are left in the Greek alphabet, but once we get through all the <laughs> variants, the, the people that are left are going to benefit because I think, this is just personally, I, I remember the one of the assistant fitness directors that I had at Culver City, Marissa, um, she had like uh, she had her degree like in theater arts major, I like her well. at, from Baylor, Burnett, from yeah. Baylor. Yeah. yeah. Um, the guy that she was dating when they moved out to California, who she ended up not staying with, um, was questioning her about like why she was working at a gym. And I, it, it didn't. And it's funny, like this was probably, you know, 12 years ago, but it didn't come up, pop up in my brain until COVID happened. And I was trying to explain to somebody how a lot of the population looks at gyms. And this is evident in how governments were bucketing us with restaurants and bars, mm -hmm. gyms and restaurants and bars, as if those are the same three fucking things. Right. Her boyfriend at one point who was giving her shit about like, why are you working in the gym? Like who goes to the gym to work out? It's like, he saw it as purely masturbatory was his fr phrasing of it. Like, Interesting. I feel like a lot of the population thinks that way oh, about it's, fitness. It's a, it's at least 80% as we know from statistics. Yeah, we've right? got 18 to 20% of people have gym memberships and the rest think this <laughs> is, the, you guys are all weird. Now, what with the data-driven obvious impact to people who were not healthy. in healthy, good shape, there is a disproportionate extra effect to being not taking care of yourself. So my hope is that as we navigate through COVID, that we stop as an industry, what we've done for so many years, just fought over the same 20%. And we've never really gone like, okay, how do we stop fighting over the same 20%? And how do we get 25%? How do we get 30% of the population? We haven't been able to figure it out, it's but I think we've been gifted it. I think that this is going to drive maybe marginally, maybe bigger, this is going to drive a larger percentage of the population, US and globally, to open their eyes and go, oh, there is value in taking care of myself that isn't going to be that isn't going to be taken care of with whatever, you know, pill or cream I'm supposed to to take, right? Like, you have heartburn, you have high blood pressure, you have all this. Okay, here's all these pills that can do all that. But like that, that didn't protect your ass against this virus. Right.